What's up, Flux Cup? This is the next episode of Swagman Seminar here with your desk host, Nikos. Always, uh, I have my desk co host here, Hufa. Yo, yeah, what's up, team? And today we have Frick Drina from Mortal Wombat. Hello, I'm here. And Kyle slash Kizzle from. Hi! Hi! Excellent. So. We're going to start off talking about the games of last week, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get this game over with. <laughs> Oofy Psych Ward versus uh, Primal. Um, that that was a three-two win for Primal. It was a reverse sweep. Uh, my notes just say pain. So. <laughs> Um, uh, anything that you guys want to talk about? I actually casted this game, and I cannot lie, it was extremely painful to watch, you know? Like, obviously, like, Infi was doing something right at the beginning, and I'm not sure, like, if it was, like, a mental thing or something like that, but maybe it's just, like, like, as soon as Elizu went in, like, Primal just looks like they, they just had it in the back, you know? And I'm, like, I'm not sure, like... If, if it's, like, better synergy with Elizu or, like, something like that. But, like, they did super well with Elizu and, like, I guess Impy, I don't, like, I guess uh, they definitely performed worse as the, the night went on. And it definitely was a rough game for Impy too, because it was pretty close towards the end of it. And it was a reverse sweep that I don't think a lot of people were expecting. But it were, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say expected, but, like, you know, both teams were good, but Umphi looks like they were stomping for the first two maps. So, you know, who knows? It, it like whether it's something internal in Umphi or something like that. There definitely was something happening, or maybe Elise was just that threatening that they decided to give the win over to them. Who knows? I mean, from what I heard, I mean, after the first two maps, and then I think Kings with Elise just dominating i i think just like tilt set in and once you're tilt like once you're tilted if you don't like get on your feet and untilt then you're, you're fucked you you really if people aren't on the same page or upset with each other then it's just a recipe for disaster and maybe that's what happened for oompy oh i forgot you're on the team because uh, i i yes <laughs> i am on one of those teams i'm on uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, Umphi Psych Ward, uh, the first two maps were just, they were, <laughs> they were great, we got to play six man, we were having fun, um, and then Elizu came in, and something, something changed with Primal, uh, they just, they just, like, we couldn't play the comps that we wanted to, and they were just shutting us down, and, uh, it was... As my notes would say, pain. True. Is that all you wrote for your notes? Is pain? That, that's that's all my notes are. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, um, I feel like I don't know. I feel like uh, on six man, I feel very comfortable, but uh, my Baptiste, I think, still needs still needs some work. So. Yeah. Uh, hey, hit me up. Luckily, though, uh, un I will say, unfortunately, uh, Triggered was not able to play in that game, so I was uh, put in. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to have him for the next game. Uh, next one is the Mortal Wombat game. This was a 3-0 against Blockchain, right? Yes, I uh, think. You are on yes, Mortal Wombat. How do you feel about that? Um, how do I feel about that game? Yes. Well, coming into it, the first map, it was kind of... I think, because we, we kind of had a scuff warm-up scrim, uh, like warm-up thing. We Most of it we were doing we were doing a TXCXX, the SATA code. So, and then we got like one actual map in. So I was kind of I was kind of dry the first game going in. I was kind of cold, if you want to use that word, I guess. Yeah, of course. And, yeah, yeah, so I didn't play too well the first map, 
but we still won. And then second map, uh, that was kind of just a clown fiesta of just random picks. And same with the third map, the, I believe um, their flex support, Moira, decided to flank every fight, which was quite funny. And I believe they won a few fights because of it, so... Well, that is a blockchain moment, if I've ever heard. Yeah, that's, that's what I hear, yes. I don't know, I, I think Mortal Kombat's new lineup is very, very scary. I don't know. I, I see that some people might make the point that, you know, they might have a hole on tank because, like, with like the way that their experts are. I think when Cam plays, doesn't Creamer play, if I'm not mistaken? Or is that the DP? Oh, never mind, it's Storm who doesn't play. So, but I mean, I think their team is very well versed in almost every role. Obviously, Golo, Creamer, and Navino are all pretty formidable tanks. And but then the real highlights: Phone, Storm, and Reborn. It's it's honestly really scary. And then obvious, just Camp is the cherry on top. I don't know. Mortal Kombat's one of my favorite teams to take it all right now. I would completely yeah. agree with you. I think that that is a scary lineup. Uh, I will say that uh, having played them now firsthand, I can say that Primal was very good. I would say right now, my if I were to pick two to go into the finals, it would be Wombat versus Primal. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely agree with that right now. Like, after just seeing everything else that's going on, I definitely think that, at least where it is right now, those are the two most likely to go do the day thing in Primals. Or in finals, my apologies. I'm like really excited for this league because a, a lot of leagues I see, it's just a lot of like maybe one team dominates, one or two teams are like really good. But this league, it feels like there's like three to four teams that are yeah like very, very not even, but they have their own like strengths and weaknesses this, and stuff. This is yeah, something... what? There's six teams that are either three or two or two and three, I think, right? Six yeah, or seven. That, yeah. Yeah, th this is something I said last podcast where I just feel like um they like there's not just one team that is like hard dominating right now you know like we've seen each team like struggle a little bit and they all have like like um we've said their their strengths and weaknesses but like there's there's no just like one team and it still feels like that like like playoffs like the the, the finals aren't even secure right now because of like how there's just so many different things going on you know um like a lot of the teams like i said are mid like not in a bad way, but they're just well. I guess that is kind of in a bad way. But like they're they're all just like they're all just there, and you know a lot of them are like like almost equally skilled, and it's kind of kind of almost like catching who like who's on a good day and who's on a bad day. So I think that's the swag. Mm -hmm. I uh, I will say that I do respect blockchain for sticking to their guns and continuing this whole. Uh, I, I don't know. There's experiment. Experiment. Funny <laughs> gaming. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie, the hog kind of caught me out a little bit there because I haven't played against a hog in months. Yeah. So it, it was very odd. I love Moose High Hog. <laughs> Moose High Hog. Uh, so the next game that we have here is uh, Barrow W versus. Uh, what was it? Musclebound Gaming, that's what it was. I tried to do that without looking at my notes. I failed utterly. Uh, so this was a 3-2 win and Barrow W's first win. Uh, Woo! hooray for Barrow W. I, I think, I remember saying this in the last episode that I think that this was Barrow W's game to win. Uh, mm -hmm. and... I'm glad that they uh, they were able to pull it out because, I mean, there were some rough moments. Uh, I, for one, think that Barrow W should uh, kind of cool it with the weird hog shit that they're trying to run. Because um, whenever they ran regular comps, they looked very good. Um, it just... Uh, it was... Musclebound didn't look bad, though. That was the thing. Uh, it mm -hmm. was very much a close game. 
No, it, it was definitely close. It was made apparent by the scoreline. But honestly, what I think about Bear, I mean, they took a hit. I don't know if people know, but Mushroom on Bear stopped playing Overwatch, so... That is upsetting. I mean, they kind of took a hit with their lineup, in my opinion. They can use their, um... Like their third expert on Greek instead of who was their off tank before? I think Drift. It was right? Drift. They I had think Drift uh, yeah. on main support for the game. Yeah, Drift and Corbs on main support. I mean, when I look at Bear, I see Egg Cushion, the um, Land Red fan, and then Clown Dog just kind of running everything. I mean, that's also from what I've heard from them as well. But you know, ups to ups to Greek or yeah, ups to Greek for you know finally winning a game. But, I don't know. I, I really wish Muscle Bounds... I mean, they look like a fun team. Like, it's just a group of friends. They're all kind of here vibing, but it's a shame that, you know, their season might not have gone the way that they originally hoped it to. Are they... are both teams, um, one in... one in, uh... Yeah, um, both teams are one in four. Muscle Bound is yeah. still over there in the standings, I think, because of map differential. Yeah, and depending on how playoffs are, which we'll learn about soon, Big reveal on yeah. the hashtag podcast. Like, uh, same team. Unsure, unsure who. Poofa's giving away the script. My apologies. Okay, like unsure who will like how playoffs will go, but still, it's just like, you know, they both probably did look like good against each other. But I'm not gonna lie to you. We've seen it before. Once put against all of these other teams, both teams are pretty awful. And I think that if there is eight or less teams that both of them are like guaranteed out now yeah i believe if yeah honestly i mean unless muscle bounds three o's blockchain this upcoming week i don't think they make top eight yeah we'll, have, we'll talk more about that at the end when yeah. we talk about the preds but that's a little silly goofy yeah the, um, I will say, though, I would get very upset with myself if I never mentioned it. Uh, Stratocaster got a 3k boop on the first nice. part of the first map. And oh, I wanted, yeah. I wanted to mention it because it was really On what impressive. character? On Lucio. But, uh, oh, that's insane. Yeah, it was uh, incredible work uh, for Stratocaster. Uh, all right. Let's talk about Bite Me, your game. Like, oh yeah. You guys played against Soar and it was a 3-1 victory. We did. Um, so our main tank was asleep, unfortunately. So the Kizzle main tank had to come out and demolish Flux Cup. Oh. Um, needless terrifying. to say, the entire time I was telling my team, yo, I don't know what I'm doing. Just please win. And so honestly, my team did. Um, I think our off tank Coop or Swanky Pants in game, they played really, really well. Like being able to keep me alive is kind of insane. Same with our supports. Big, yeah, that big to them. Ooh. Like, but oh my god, it, it was a it was a pretty fun game. But I don't think we should really count out Sor yet because they're honestly a pretty decent team. Um, I mean, their DPS obviously do a lot. I know on Kings, Umphi Psychward also lost the map to this, but. Um, Ballman would just pin in and make so much space for Wi-Fi on Doomfist. And Wi-Fi kind of kind of did everything. He was probably the best player in the lobby. So, I mean, I don't know. I enjoyed it. It was a good game. But I'm glad to see Bite Me kind of coming back into the coming back into the mix a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad to see Sword doing kind of weird stuff like that. Not not like, like unconventional, but like kind of interesting like strats and like how to like use their players to win the most, you know? You yeah. know, and like, I also casted this game and it definitely was silly goofy. But, you know, um... Once we actually did see Soar on normal comps, they did start to do a lot better, you know? But, like, like, like we've been talking about before, there are some issues on the, on, on the team, right? Like, we've seen, like, Lily obviously wasn't there as well, Lily slipped through the game, and, um... Like, you know, they also just, like, didn't look hot. But in my opinion, you should never, like, they do just, like, oh, like enable Wi-Fi to do good things. But you shouldn't, like, your whole team shouldn't just be reliant on your DPS. Which, like, 
kind of feels like how it is at least right now when they do play those silly goofy comps or like from what we saw this this week so it was like like watching them it just felt like sometimes they just didn't have like much like um like game sense i i guess like it's, just like kind of banking on wi-fi killing people you know it's also just the point that all season we've kind of seen them you know kind of juggle around different lineups it, it seems like every game sort of shows up with different people and different roles mm-hmm. which i mean it's probably just unlucky scheduling but i don't know if they make playoffs i'd like to see them you know kind of stick to a lineup and see how far they can go because i really yeah. do think they have a ton of potential yeah they de- they definitely do and we i think we've said this for a few weeks but it's just like it, it might just be like too late at this point you know yeah I, so i completely agree with that soar has the the pieces there i just they they have yet to figure out how to put together the puzzle yeah, yeah. from past experience playing on teams with beam all man which i, I mean uh uh, I mean, I played sorry. with them a decent amount. What? You right. Go on. Or Nate, Nikos, I'm sorry. Hmm? Go on. Um, yeah, I played on a team before with B-Ball Man, and he's very, very good at ball in my experience of playing with him. Like, he, he's a very, very, uh, like, knowledgeable ball player and, like, knows, like, what he's doing in the character. So I feel like if they lean more into the ball comps and that kind of stuff, uh, more into the like the uh, like apart from like the weird stuff they're playing, if like they could do like really really well on like certain maps and like certain uh, matchups. If they, I I don't know, and like as someone who's all, like also played on a team with um people man Gabe, um like yeah he is really he is really really good at ball, but they also like I think they could enable him to be a good Ryan as well, depending on the team, you know. So it's like he definitely like they definitely can play other comps too. But it's just like, are they even willing to at this point? Like, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I also know that they, they're they capable, like, B-Ball Man and uh, Lily are capable of working together really well on those dives, so. Yeah. I, uh, it, it... I'd be interested to see if they can. I don't know if it's possible, but, uh. If they can pull it back, I, I I would love to see them do well. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, uh, congratulations, Kyle. Uh, oh yeah, I love the Rome Legion. Yep. So real. Both uh, of the guests in the show were off rolling in their games, by the way. Well, <laughs> Kyle was kind of off rolling. I don't know. No, I mean, me main tank is one hundred percent a little bit more than off roll. That is I feel level. like I'm a silver player. You have to play main tank from now on. You are a main Praying tank to player. God that Hudson doesn't sleep against Umphi Psych Ward next week. I do not want Nikos to be demolished by the Kizzle ball. Please that would have be, mercy. be a tragedy. <laughs> Let's go Kizzle. I'm believing Woo! in you. Um, is there another game? I believe uh, yes. Sydney Sydney. versus MI7. Ooh, I'm so MI7. excited to talk about this one. Yeah, I... Uh... I, I, I remember I watched this game and um, yeah I have uh, I have some notes on this game. <laughs> uh, it looked a little rough for MI7, I'll say. And a little. I will say also that the uh, the uh, prediction did not go in my favor. MI7 did not win this game. It was a three-one victory for Sydney Sunsets. And I gotta say, like, Sydney Sunsets did pretty much what they do best, which is set up their DPS to hard carry them uh, during fights. There was some ridiculous plays from uh, Kate in particular on Bastion in the, uh, on their Havana map, I think. On like the last fight, Kate killed like five of them. <laughs> so it was quite the match to watch. Um, but MI7 did not like. I don't know. It didn't really look like the MI7 I was expecting to watch that day. No, I mean they had the the few people they've picked up in recent weeks, the a few apprentice players, and I think. I haven't heard of any of them before, but I think like Garblox and Jerryberry, I believe, 
And I don't know. I mean, I think MI7 looks very, very strong with their starting six in. But then when they're down people like Laser and Grizzly, they kind of look to fall back and struggle a little bit. Yeah, and, you know, um, it sure, like, you know, Sydney, Sun Sydney Sunsets, like, proved me wrong with what I said. Like, last week, I said that they had to win against an actual team in order to prove that they actually are on a comeback. And, you know, they, they won against, like, a pretty, like, top-tier team, I guess, that, like, at the time. So, you know, props to them to, like, for, like, I guess, proving what I said wrong. You know, because previously we had seen them, like, losing games that they just should not have or, like, predicted should not have lost. You know, and they 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 won. So now now that they're back, we kind of just have to see how they go against everyone else. Uh, yeah, I will say, though, that, uh, was it the first map was Lijang, I think it was? Uh, whenever MI7 did look good, it looked like the lore show. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think I tuned into Hanamura, I believe. I'm pretty sure lore killed about two or three people every fight. He was 100% putting in work, but I think Sydney just had a better day, honestly. Unfortunate. DPS is the worst role in the game. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that that game definitely is an, an example of what I said earlier, like who's having a better day or not, you know? Exactly. Yeah, the um, the mid knee sunsets are able to uh, pull out the win, and honestly, I'm happy for them because uh, it was it went really well. Um, although I will say that my last thing that I'm gonna say on that game is that on King's Row, uh, it looked like Kate and Fish had a uh, had a like a what was it a challenge going on who could feed harder kate on the <laughs> pink fist or fish on the reinhardt uh so that map did kind of look a little rough but <laughs> other than that once it got to havana it looked really dominant no all right so thankfully we don't have to talk about roster changes anymore uh so we can get right into the next week's games uh Mr. Kyle, I hear that we're going to be playing each other next week. Yes, we are. I'm very much looking forward to it. I mean, I think some people might just write this off as an easy game for Umfi, but I don't know. I, I think this. I think it's going to be a lot closer than some people think. That's just my cup of tea, but I'm really excited to... Well, first off, it's really just an opportunity to prove that the rebuild has kind of worked out for Bite Me. But at the same time, it could solidify Umfi as a top three team going into playoffs. So, I don't know. I think it's going to be one of the more interesting games coming up this week. I I agree. I think that... I I don't think that it's going to be an easy win for Umfi. I think it's going to be pretty close. Um, because... I don't know. Bite Me you, it has been looking good. So... I'm interested. Um, I hope this. I'm one just gets on my knees. I'm just on my knees, crossing my heart that my main tank actually is awake. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Honestly, if, if <laughs> winnable, I, I want I want a ruling from Flux Cup staff that if uh, the Kizzle main tank has to come out, we can only respond to it with the RMM DPS. Holy! Kizzle owns Rock Knee Simulator. <laughs> like I just like I I don't think that like I don't think this game will probably okay I'm gonna say that and like someone's gonna roll someone and I'm gonna look like a fucking idiot but um, yeah, I look like an idiot every week on the podcast <sighs> yeah we know sorry that was me because we love you it's okay we love you yeah we do love oh you. yeah but um I just agree where I think it's gonna be close yeah and we may have been a top tier team, but obviously something's going on. But that doesn't mean that they're not top tier, as they were still able to take two maps off of Primal with Chili. So it's just like, you know, they, they may have lost to what is presumably the best team in the league right now, but, you know, it really depends on how they go and how Bite Me can match up to that. 
And, you know, I just don't think it's going to be close. And it definitely is. But I mean, it's time to actually prove, like, hey, this is what we're doing and we're doing it right. Or Umphis, Umphis just to prove, like, hey, we're still, we're still not out of this yet. But, you know, I'm, I'm, this is going to be another like, very exciting game to watch, to be honest. Absolutely. Yes. I cannot wait. I would like Bite Me to win because I want to see the entirety of uh, Oomphy Psych where going to the juice box downward spiral. Yes. <laughs> the juice box downward spiral. It, it's going to happen. I, It'd be I'm, pretty funny. I'm already on that downward spiral. I'm about two and a half rotations on that spiral. Oh no. Uh, but, nah, hopefully we can have uh, we can have triggered there um, this time. The, I can um, ring. Yeah, no. Uh, so... <laughs> just... <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so... Uh, I accidentally flashed my, uh... My... DMs with Aliano, so... Aliano, uh, censor that? Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> so... The, uh... Alright, the uh, next game that we have to talk about, uh... Primal is going against Sydney Sunsets. Uh, I think this is going to oh be like my God. the real test for Sydney Sunsets. Can you you pulled one out on MI7, and it looked pretty convincing. <laughs> now can you beat the top team in the league? <laughs> I I wish you the best of luck, and I think that if you guys play the game like you're comfortable with, you can do it. But Primal is very very good. <laughs> I was put paid on Junkrat, you win GG, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm leaning towards the primal, honestly, like, demolition this week. I, I really think this has potential to be just a 30 minute game. I don't know. I, I think even even with their wins, again, I mean, they played MI7, which it was obviously MI7 on a really poor day. It's probably the worst we've seen on MI7 all season. And then. I mean, a squeaky win against Muscle Bound. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I can really hop on this Sydney hype train, honestly. I I think they've kind of been on a downward, that, that downward spiral. The <laughs> downward spiral, god damn it. Ever, ever since they replaced, I, I think it was Remy with Chicken Nugget God and Frogman with Hayden. Not to diss them at all or anything, but I don't know. I'd like to see Sydney keep it close, but realistically. I don't think it's yeah, um, that is I fair. would, you know, I cannot lie, no offense to New Sunsets, I would like to see Primal win this game. Sorry. Sorry in advance, but you know, um. You guys are a bunch of haters. Ratio. <laughs> um, anyways. Damn. I just got ratioed on the podcast, this is- Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it's just like- yeah, you pro, you pro, you had proven, what, English? Like, you did well against MI7, but, like, are you actually gonna do well against the top tier team? I think that lineup is just like, I can't help but laugh at that, at that matchup. Like, Sydney Sunset's finally proving that they're not actually, that they haven't, like, fallen off, and now they have to face the best, the best team in the league. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's a bit rough. Uh, I'm gonna say it's an uphill battle, but yeah, I'm gonna have to say Primal wins this. But I think Sydney's gonna be able to play it closer than people will expect. I think that if Sydney Sunsets they play more DPS heavy comps, DPS focused comps, uh, uh, like, like lean into their really, really good DPS line, I think that they would they could definitely do decent against Primal, but I'm not sure if they will be able to pull out a win just yet but i feel like yeah. if they get a little more experience and like they get a little more practice together and they, they play more of the team together then i think it'd be it'd be a closer game it's also just the legend of the hayden team didn't his team in bpl they were kind of mid in the regular season but then stormed through playoffs and made it to grand finals so you obviously can't count them out quite yet since i'm pretty sure they have basically made playoffs i unless the format changes drastically um, i'm pretty sure they're in so I don't know. I feel like this game might be like the Joker arc game. They might be put back onto their heels, but then I, I think they're gonna full steam ahead into playoffs. Yeah. 
I agree. Fair. All right. So we have our next uh, game is Mortal Wombat versus Soar. Uh, interesting game. Uh, I think that uh, the thing is, is I think that uh, Soar has like they're still trying to figure out their team. Mortal Wombat has figured out their team and they're doing it pretty well. Their new additions seem to slot in perfectly well, and uh, I, I I really am kind of expecting a Mortal Wombat victory from this. Yeah, I mean, if Sora can figure it out and, like I said, set down a lineup, I mean, I think they can maybe make this game close, but I don't think this game is going to go anywhere past the 3-1 to one like we've seen from Sora the past two weeks. Yeah, I, I just don't think that, like, Sora has ha has been having issues for the past few weeks. I don't think that any one change can just fix it all like that against a team that just knows what they're doing and plays normal people comps against a team that we've just seen kind of just... I wouldn't say that. Look at King's Row and a few, a few, a few, a few, a few, a few King's Row, then come talk to you about that. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> but... You guys weren't running ball on control center and ball on every single map. Pop. Like you know what I, you know what I'm saying. You, you know it's like in, unless Sora scrims every single week has a consistent lineup and knows what the fuck they're doing, then um, it's it's not. I don't think it's gonna go to Sora. Alright, yeah, I I completely agree. So. The thing is, is I want Sora to do so well, but I don't think they will. You know, it's hard seeing your friends on a team like that, I think. Especially from us being previous teammates with Lily and Gabe and, like, having so much success. It, it's just, like, hard seeing them struggle like that, you know? But, uh, It's kind of, it's like, they, they have it there, and they just have to put the pieces together, but it's just something just isn't working. You know, sometimes teams are kind of just like that. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So the next game of the week, Emily Seven versus Bear Overwatch team. Uh, I will say, if we see the same Emily Seven we saw against the Sydney Sunsets, uh, Bear OW actually has a chance. I don't. I don't. I think they have a little bit more than a chance. If it's that same Emily Seven, I think Bear kind of. Like, wins that game, to be honest. I think the issue is that it has a chance of not being the same MI7. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, if MI7 show up to play with what they've been running most of the season, like, if that MI7 that beat Primal shows up again, then, I mean, it's a quick 3 out. Yeah. The, um... There were just... A lot of uh, a lot of problems. Barrow W. I'm just gonna say right now, just stop playing your wacky hog stuff out the gate and uh, come out to win with that uh, with your team comps. Cause I I know you guys can win. I've seen it happen. <laughs> I think also if Bear plays around. Um, egg cushion, they could definitely benefit from that. Just allowing him to play the hero that he wants to play. I mean, I think he's a very underrated player, just kind of stuck on a mid team. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, they can pull out a win. But from what I've been hearing, the team environment isn't really the best, so I'm not sure if it will happen. I mean, I would give Bears the credit though, because they've gone through <clears throat> some some shit this season in terms of. You know, behind the scenes stuff and managers and all that. They've gone through a lot this season, so. Yeah, the. Uh, I always give props to a team that had to rebuild mid season. Uh, the last match is Blockchain versus Musclebound Gaming. Uh, this one's weird to me because I feel like individually blockchain are the better players but 
their strategy of not having a strategy is makes me want to think that Musclebound can totally win this game. Wait, sorry, I just totally blanked. Who do they play? Musclebound plays blockchain. Oh, okay. Dear God. This is uh, this is gonna be quite the game. Uh, gonna be the game for the ages. I, I cannot wait to have to watch this. I I hope I get to cast either this one or the the bite me game because both of them are super swag. But I think this is one of those games where it's like, you know, you could have a team that is just worse, but it just works well as a team together. They have good teamwork versus a game that's just mechan like a team that's just mechanically better, you know. And we like. This could go either way, I, again, I think. Um, you know, when you work well as a team, you just have to make sure that you aren't, like... You aren't tilting, you aren't making mistakes, and you can definitely win. But, like, mechanically side, if you um, just capitalize on what you're best at, then you could win. Like, it, it's a very toss-up, but it's, like, what, like... Two different sides of, like, a team just going at it, if that makes any sense. I don't know, like you said, I believe last week that you said it was Bears game to win over Musclebound. I think this is Musclebound's game to win over Blockchain. Like I well, said, I mean, I mean, Blockchain, they beat Ducks week one, which was way too close of a game. I'm pretty sure that went down to like last fight, if I remember correctly. And then they had that one game over Sydney where Rhinos and Asdo kind of uh, committed heinous acts against Hayden <laughs> Overwatch team. <laughs> But, I mean, outside of that, blockchain has been kind of on that downward spiral. I mean, they have been dealt the tough hands having to play MI7, Primal, and Mortal Wombat back to back to back. So, I don't know. I think, I think blockchain finally gets a chance to not play a juggernaut team. But at the same time, I don't know. I could see Musclebound taking this. I'm going to have to agree. I think that Musclebound could totally win this. And I will, you know what, I'm, I will make that at my hot take. I'm going to make it as a muscle-bound win. as my pr prediction. It'll I be, think it'll that be game has a potential to be uh, actually like a very, very fun game to watch. I feel like it could go like, either way, really. Musclebounds could also just mirror what blockchain's doing and also play some silly, goofy things and just turn it into an absolute clown fiesta. Which that'd be fun to see, also. So, like that one game of if that's Zero the strategy, where teams... we need to get this game streamed. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, for the people. Yes, please, Alianis, I beg. All right. So, after this, uh, I was told to make some announcements on the podcast, and uh, the first one was one that was given to. All the managers um, uh, for Roll Stars. Uh, the managers are going to be nominating one to two people from their own team that they think are deserving of Roll Star. Interesting. Um, and from what I'm told, it's going to be a an expert and an apprentice player. I believe is the uh, what's going to be there for each roll like one to two for each roll um i think it's interesting the uh the roll stars after that there that's just the nominees because after that that's going to be the uh the public voting um, that's very yeah i believe when i did the form i think it was like an hour and a half ago i think i did it um you nominate one or two quote unquote MVPs for each division, yep. and then you have the opportunity to pick one tank, one DPS, and one support to nominate. Yeah, that, that's what it is. And I mean, I like it. I'm interested to see what uh, what who each team will pick. Um, I'll have to set up my own list of what I think of who I think deserves roll star but that will not be this week I will uh, I'll figure that out for another episode I'll have to do one too and we could do a whole comparing thing yeah. 
That would be kind of cool. The, uh... I will say, though, that... All the managers are going to be able to uh, do it. So... I don't know. It's just new. It's different. Everything about this season is new and different, so... Who am I to judge? The, uh, I think it's a very comp comprehensive system, actually. I think it can lead to a lot of people like getting like uh, nominated that wouldn't get nominated any other way. Yeah. Fair. Uh, now for this one, I'm going to have to pause the Mario Superstar Baseball because this oh, one is no. the the real one. Big guns are coming out. Huh? All right, so playoffs. Uh, we got our first thing. Hooray! Playoffs are double elimination. Woo! Playoff state top six teams, one and two get a bye, and number one gets to choose their opponent. Hmm. Interesting. So hmm. interesting. I don't know hmm. if that means that... Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that means that uh who is it? Musclebound or Barrow WR uh, out of the running. I don't know how that would be, but I think Bear is 100% eliminated. I think Musclebound's right on the cusp of being eliminated. I mean, maybe if something, if if like Bite Me and Soar both lose and then they get a 3-0 over Blockchain, I think they slide in, but I don't know. Things are looking bleak for both Bear and Musclebound. Yeah. And then I think even for us, Soar and Blockchain, our matches are kind of kind of must win, honestly, to make it in the top six. We're all within two maps of each other. Soar being at minus two, us being minus three, and Blockchain being minus four. So that's definitely the clump to look out for to kind of get that last sixth uh, the sixth seed, but top five I think is pretty much locked in being the way it stands right now. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be Primal, Oofy Psychord, Mortal Wombat, MI7, and uh, the Sydney Sunsets, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So. Unless something really goofy happens, like if MI7 get 3-0'd, they have the potential to be... They have the Honestly, if MI7 get 3-0'd against Bear, which I don't think is going to happen, but if they do, they have potential to fall out of this race when early season they looked like a, like a pretty decent contender. Yeah. Yep. So, you heard it here first, Bear. You are... You're not playing so that you can make the playoffs. You're playing so that MI7 doesn't. <laughs> so there you go. There's your encouragement. I hope you win. Take one for the team. Nothing really? against MI7. Something interesting I, I like can bring chaos. up. If, if things do stay how they are with the top five, then out of Soar, Bite Me, and Blockchain, who would... I think that fight for the sixth seed is definitely going to be pretty interesting to watch, especially if one of those games are happening late on Sunday night, kind of sitting there and waiting for the... I don't even know what I'm saying. I am I going to hate myself for saying this. Actually, no, I don't care. Uh, I think that by me has the best chance of doing it. Oh, yeah. With how I mean, I, honestly, are. I'm not sure. When I originally saw it, I mean... With blockchain having, like, on paper an easy game against muscle bounds, I'm not sure. I mean, both us and Soar have pretty difficult games against Umphi and Mortal Wombat, respectively. Oh, wait, even though mind. blockchain is at... Yeah, like, even though blockchain is at the, like, the lower end of this fight right now, I don't know. I, I think they could, it, especially if they 3-0, I think they probably have the best chance. It, it, it hurts me to say, but I don't know. I, I think... It's a must-win game against Oopfy, and I'm not sure if we have the the strength and talent to pull it out. 
Holy. I think the season's gonna be like really, really interesting going into playoffs. I think it's gonna be like a lot of upsets and a lot of. Oh, just, for like, sure weird now. Shit happening. Like now with the whole playoff thing, like, holy, like we we better get some streams on those lower tier players because like yeah, like the those like mid teams like we better get some streams on those because like now everyone wants to know who's gonna be in playoffs and everyone wants to see these teams like battle it out. This is gonna be like super interesting now. I think. This is only making the league more competitive for these teams. For Bite Me, that has done a full rebuild. For Blockchain, that has trolled the entire season. And Soar, who just is Soar. You know what I mean? It's very exciting to see these three, like, Identity fully... Crisis. Yeah, <laughs> like, like both teams are have a very big personality, if that makes sense. So it's very exciting to see, like... These three teams fight for the spot, you know? Yeah, and even then with the format and the way the playoffs is going to work out, those first two play-in matches, I, I think those are those are the potential to be very, very fun games to watch going yeah. in. I mean, I, I think it will be, what, three plays six, four plays five? So mm -hmm. those games might have potential to be best games of the season. And I do like the double el elimination too. The original thought of six teams single elim, I, I thought it was kind of short for almost yeah. the full season. It, it's felt like a while, so I think a one and done game for a team to be out isn't the most fun. Especially but. with um how how crazy things have been, how many mix ups we've had, and how many like teams battling it out this whole season. You know what I mean? Like nothing. A lot of these like besides like Primal and such like or a lot of these teams aren't solid you know and we're seeing like different things every single time like like bad days good days different rosters like i feel like having that double elimination will actually kind of solidify it just a little bit more because of the fact that like this this season of flux cup has just been like a whole a whole different bowl of fruit you know yeah i think that the season's been a lot more interesting than people thought it was going to be going into it i agree i mean it, it's just so many this like bottom kind of, I'd say maybe like the third seed in standings to the eighth seed in standings. It's so, so close. And I mean, there's, there's teams that you maybe wouldn't expect to be here. Like if you told me week two that Sydney was on a fall and Bite Me was like, had a chance to maybe make it, uh, no, nah, I, I mean, yeah. it would have been crazy. But exactly. I don't know. I, I really like how things have panned out. And like, I, I agree with you that this this season has turned out a lot more like interesting than we thought it would be, but I feel like it's for different reasons. You know what I mean? Like it, it's very interesting because of the fact that we have so many weird situation teams battling it out now for like a six a six team playoffs, which I think is like very very weird but very interesting. You know? Yeah, and then there's just like the. The storylines of the season, right? You have the whole Ducks debacle. You have Bite Me dropping three players per game. You've got, I mean, and most of the games have even been close. Like, we've seen our fair share of reverse sweeps, 3-2 games. So, yeah. I don't know. It, I, I think the season has turned out great so far. And I'm really, really excited for playoffs. I agree. All right. So, with that, I think that is... The end of the uh, the last thing that we have to talk about. Does anyone have any anything they wanted to talk about on the, while they're on the podcast? Um, I think the viewers should invest heavily in Bite Me Coin. Now <laughs> selling. Uh, yes. I'm selling it, by the way. Uh, I'm I'm the one <laughs> doing the selling. <laughs> so uh, you've heard it here first. Invest in Bite Me Coin. We are taking uh, over the crypto world. I will also say that Navino told me to tell you guys and everyone listening to the podcast that World Wombat will be du double blocking every day in preparation for the sword game. So, <laughs> ah, I hate Marsupial gaming. Oh my gotcha. God. Like gaming. just like they right? double double blocked last week as well Mars in preparation for the blockchain game, right? I was draft picks. Got everybody had us. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did not fall off a fall off a map and pugs five times on Moira in a opposing team scrim. Did not happen. You're gone, <laughs> brother. 
Ask Juicebox. <laughs> I don't want to ask Juicebox anything. That's a very good piece of advice. I don't want to talk to that guy. He's Italian. Uh, okay. Mamma mia. It's I'm also pasta. Very Italian. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but. God damn it, marsupial. I, I, you know what? I'm saying it here on the podcast. I will never be on a marsupial team. Ever. We'll never Haven't you already on been on one? Nope. Yeah, I'm in chat. Is Diddy Kong marsupial gaming? <laughs> is Donkey Kong Mario Baseball Superstars marsupial gaming? Yeah, alright. <laughs> that's the one thing. If I can rep it's a toad marsupial, marsupial? <laughs> If I can rep marsupial gaming in uh, uh, Mario Superstar Baseball, then you oh got my God. me. Mar you know? Marsupial gaming fly out. Is you that you heard this Wait, out of he goes, is that is that your first hit with fucking Donkey Kong? Why do you have to talk about the gameplay? Right. <laughs> oh my god, into the gap! Oh. <laughs> Two score off of that! Oh, the nice I don't double, understand double. baseball. Oh. Oh, uh, yes. I played baseball. Mercy Overwatch! <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> Did uh, you lose? No, I'm Donkey Kong's team. <laughs> Oh, for real? Yeah, I was. Oh, for real. Oh my god, Marsupial Gaming MVP! Let's yep. go! Marsupial for the eighth Gaming. season in a row, wow. every draft league ever because they're all the same exact team. Woo! <laughs> Fuck the Dingo Dynasty. My boys rep the Diddy Kong Dynasty. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, with that, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week, Flux Cup. Uh, Bye, Flux Cup. I love you. Goodbye. Bye.